Good evening, everyone! We are now live in Autodesk Community Philippines Facebook page and YouTube channel for Master 2D Sketching in Fusion 360. Inviting everyone to please do like and share our live stream. And please don't forget to register.
Good evening everyone and before we start we would like to invite you to join our groups inviting you to join Autodesk Community Philippines in Facebook Autodesk Fusion 360 Worldwide User Group and uh, Fusion 360 Lady Users Worldwide to our ladies out there inviting you to join of course our CAD Community Asia inviting you to join as well CAD Community Asia is also in LinkedIn of course inviting you in meetup.com slash Autodesk Community Philippines where you can see our uh, future events our upcoming and ongoing events yeah and hello to everybody please do comment your name and uh, school name we would like to know you. And of course, hello to our uh, partner schools. Good evening, everyone. So this is the start of our uh, monthly training. So please do mark your calendar that our Fusion 360 training will be every second Friday of the month. Let me share my screen. Okay. Uh, if you want to receive a certificate of a course completion or event participation, please do register in our link below. Can we know in our audience... Um, who is already a user of Fusion 360? Can you please just uh, write it down or post it in our comment section? If you're already a user, you may uh, post it user. While if not, you may post first timer. But don't you worry, this course is designed uh, for uh, foundations or... Uh, it's a beginner level. Yan, we'll be waiting your responses. You may comment down below, user, if you already tried Fusion 360, while well, first tr first timer, if not. Yan, we already have a user. Yeah, we would like to see your comments, user, yeah, and see Jamsel Domingo, Jomar Borlasa, so uh, familiar names, Francis Soliman. Yeah, and of course, we also have our first timers. For our first timers, don't forget to download Fusion 360 for you to follow along. I'll be posting the download link in our comment section. Okay, and this uh, Fusion 360 uh, course or our training for tonight, you will gain understanding of 2D sketching and of course the mastery of sketch constraints. You will be able to level up 
to assembly and freeform modeling with high confidence that you have mastered the very fundamentals of part creation. Okay, and of course, by the end of, the, of this course, you will have a solid foundation on 2D sketching and mastery of sketch constraints in Fusion 360. Okay, um, just uh, keep posting your comments and I'll be adding our instructor for tonight. He is um, Autodesk Fusion 360 certified user and uh, Autodesk certified instructor. I would like to add engineer John Mark Bakiran. Good evening, sir. Hello and uh, good evening once more to everyone. Yeah, thank God it's uh, Friday. <laughs> okay. So once more, this is for absolute, uh, this uh, training is for absolute beginners. And yeah, if you're a beginner, like my daughter, so I'm actually teaching my 13-year-old uh, how to uh, use and how to, uh, how to learn Fusion 360. If uh, she can learn that within this... Uh, this live stream training and our upcoming co course, definitely you or your younger brother, younger sister, or even your grandmother down no, can learn uh, Fusion 360. So let me share to you a glimpse of uh, our upcoming uh, trainings. Okay, so I hope you're seeing this one. Uh, the schedule for uh, Fusion 360 is, that's uh, second, is it right, Miss Nelsie? Second Friday yes, of second the month. Friday of each month. Okay, and as you can see within this uh, topics, we will go all the way to generative design and we will do simulation studies as well. So this is for 12 months. And by that, definitely you'll be having uh, the confidence uh, to take up the challenge of a Fusion 360 certification exam. So yes, we do have a certification exam for Fusion uh, 360. Okay. So once more, if you think this uh, live stream is uh, beneficial to someone you know, please invite them uh, to join us. This is uh, absolutely uh, free for all and our ways and means of uh, helping out everyone, uh, most especially in these times, uh, these difficult times uh, because of this uh, pandemic. So. For those who are not yet uh, familiar with the uh, Fusion 360, let me show to you a, a quick uh, video. What is Fusion 360? Is it a cloud-enabled collaboration platform that enables designers to instantly share, review project data, manage versions, find where use, and share ideas on any device at any time? Is it a 3D CAD application with both freeform and solid modeling tools seamlessly integrated into one application? Is it a 3D animation and rendering application? Is it the first cloud-enabled tool to provide 2D drawing capabilities? Is it simulation software? Or is it a CAM application for turning and milling operations? This is what you need to know about Fusion 360. It's not any one of those things. It's all of those things. It's the next generation product innovation platform designed to work on Mac, PC, and mobile devices. So come on, what are you waiting for? Try Fusion 360 today. Look around you. Everything has been designed and manufactured, starting with someone's vision. But it's a hard process using multiple tools to get the job done. Tools that are expensive, complex, and don't integrate with one another, something needed to change. We knew that we needed to create a better solution, so we started talking with you. 
you told us you wanted one tool that would connect the dots between design to fabrication. One tool that would allow you to collaborate with people working on the same project in real time. With Fusion 360, you can take your idea from concept to creation, allowing you to start from a conceptual design to simulation, to rendering, to fabrication, all in one seamless environment. Adam Mugabro wanted to create a functional sculpture, a sculpture that someone can see through. Fusion 360 fit the bill to evolve his vision into a work of art. Jeff Hooper wanted a better workflow, a bridge between a Windows platform and Mac OS. Jeff took a passion and leveraged Fusion 360 as a visualization, product development, and fabrication tool, allowing Jeff to sculpt his vision of form, function, and fabrication within his brand. Adam and Daniel from Mobbot saw Fusion 360 as a collaborative platform in a single tool. Fusion 360 allowed their team to integrate their electrical components within their mechanical designs, decreasing development time, as well as sharing completed designs with manufacturers in China. We're listening. We're gonna take your feedback and using our experience, continue to update Fusion 360. One tool that allows you to take your idea from concept to creation. Okay, so once more, were you able, Miss Nelsie? Were you able to mention to our attendees that we offer uh, two types of certificate? Yeah, I'll just uh, I'll said to them that uh, we'll be giving certificate of event participation yep. and uh, course completion, and I hope everyone uh, is able to hear me properly. Does my audio improve? Uh, slight. You need to raise the gain. I think you need the, to raise the gain up. Hello. Better, I think. All right. Okay, so, yep. Uh, just to reiterate, we offer two certificates. Uh, one is course completion. Uh, after this, we are requiring you to submit an output. Okay, so actually, uh, that output is the 11 uh, challenges that we are uh, going to upload after uh, this live stream. And with that 11 ch challenges, I'll be demonstrating how to create the five one. Okay. So for the five ones for that, and uh, for those who are interested to uh, not, not, not to submit, but only interested to have a certificate of event participation we require you to comment down your full name a uh, school or uh company name okay so yeah uh let's uh, begin with the challenge uh, number one okay so let me now uh, share my full screen and yeah let's go Upon inspecting the 2D drawing, notice there's no mention of units. With that in mind, we are going to assume that this drawing is in millimeters. And before we begin sketching, let's make sure our model is in millimeters. And to do that, I'm going to head over to our browser, twirl document settings down, and make sure under change active units, the unit type is in millimeter. Recall that this is a 2D sketching training. Think of this as in Fusion 360, we are given three papers. And that paper is named as XY, XZ, and YZ. To begin sketching, let's sketch on our XY paper. And to do that, I'm going to head over to Create and select Create Sketch. 
Notice our XY plane is currently selected. And once I select Create Sketch, we are now in Sketch Mode. And some of the visual cues that we are in Sketch Mode is we can see this green check mark, which is a Finish a Sketch, and we have our Sketch Palette. Let's now head to our toolbar and sketch this geometry out, starting with our line command. So heading up to create and selecting line, which has a keyboard shortcut of letter L. Notice it prompts us to place the first point. So I'm going to left click somewhere here and move slowly to the right. Next, I'm going to left click once more. I'm going to move it down, left click once more, moving slowly to the left, left click once more. And notice in this method, we are creating a chain of lines. To terminate the line command, we can simply hit escape on our keyboard. Next, let's create the arcs here. So let's head up under Create, under Arc. So notice we have three options for arc. I'm going to select a three-point arc. Let's place our start point at this endpoint. Left click here. Second point at this endpoint. Left click. And I'm going to left click over here to complete the arc. Arc command still active. Let's place another arc here at this endpoint. Move to this endpoint, left click, and the left click here to create the arc. And hitting escape to disable the command. Let's create two circles. So I'm going to head up once more to our toolbar under create. Selecting center diameter circle or simply heading to our toolbar with our center diameter circle visible. I'm going to left click on this. We are now prompted to place our center point. And instead of placing our circle here, I'm going to place our two circles somewhere around here. Left click and the left click once more to create the circle. Left click here and left click. Hitting escape. And I'm going to hold my middle mouse button to pan this down. Let's now add the constraints. In addition, notice the color of our sketch entities is in blue. If a sketch entity is in blue, it's an indication that your sketch or that entity is not yet fully defined. And to add, notice I can freely move these geometries. I can resize the diameter of the circle, move this geometry up and down. Also, in the creation of this sketch, Notice uh, four constraints were automatically added. And that constraints are the horizontal constraint, this perpendicular constraint, and uh, this tangent constraint. Okay, so, yep, uh, before we move uh, further, once more, a uh, shout out to our uh, partners. Okay, someone is calling me in. Uh, okay, so once more, shout out to our uh, partners who made this uh, live stream uh, possible. So, yep, uh, going back to full screen. And before we add constraints, uh, feel free to left click and hold to move a specific entities. Okay, our first intent is to place this circle into this sketch, the first constraint that I'm going to utilize 
is our coincident constraint. So left click here. Notice the icon on my cursor. I'm going to hover over the center point of the circle. I'm going to left click, move over to the center point of this arc, left click, and notice the center points of this arc and the circle are now coincident with each other. I'm going to hit escape and hover over the center point, left click and hold to move this point. In addition, notice the appearance of a coincident constraint as the center point is selected. In addition, notice the difference between this circle and this circle. The center point of this circle is white and this one is in blue. When it's in blue, it signifies that the entity is currently selected. To deselect this center point, I'm going to left click anywhere on our blank canvas or simply hit escape. Let's place this circle inside the sketch as well. I'm going to head over to our toolbar under constraints and this time I'm going to select concentric. Hovering over the circle, notice as it highlights in blue, I'm going to left click. Next, I'm going to head over this arc and left click. Let me zoom in and hit escape to disable the concentric constraint. Notice here, I utilize two different constraints to perform a common task. And as we progress in this course, I want you to have a solid grasp on each use and application of all constraints. The transition between this arc and this line is smooth. Same with this arc and this line. But on this side, we have an abrupt change. The ideal constraint for this is tangent. So I'm going to head up to constraints, selecting tangent, selecting this line and this arc. So notice the addition of that tangent constraint. Let's add a tangent constraint between this line and this arc as well. So selecting them both. Notice we have an error this perpendicular constraint is currently performing what the tangent constraint is doing. I prefer instead of perpendicular, this is also a, a tangent constraint. So I'm going to hover over this constraint, left click and hit delete on my keyboard. Heading up once more, selecting tangent, selecting this line and this arc. Hitting escape. Next, this line has no use uh, for me, so I prefer deleting this, hovering over this line. So notice it highlights in blue, left click and hitting delete. The diameter of these two circles should be equal with one another. I'm going to head up once more to constraints, selecting equal selecting this circle and this circle. Hitting escape and I'm going to resize this circle on the left so notice the effect of equal. In addition, equal constraint can also be applied to lines and arcs. Moving forward, let's now add the dimensions. I'm going to head over to our Create Toolbar, selecting Sketch Dimension. Shortcut key for this is letter D. Hovering over the center point, left click. Hovering over the center point, left click. I'm going to move up and place our dimension here, left click, key in 100. 
Hitting enter. Dimension tool still active. Let's hover over this circle. Left click. And the left click here to place our dimension key in 20. Hitting enter. Dimension tool still active. I'm going to hover over this horizontal line. Left click here. Hover over this horizontal line. Left click. Move to the left. Left click here to place our dimension key in 50. Hitting enter. And hitting escape. And I'm going to reposition this dimension by hovering over. Left click and hold. Release. Okay, so we're hoping you're uh, getting the hang of it. Uh, Ms. Nelsie, there seems to be a, a technical problem with uh, our friends in uh, Bicol. So, yep, uh, we're going to check uh, that out. And yeah, uh, let's uh, stay on the course. Uh, we are going to answer uh, your questions uh, after uh, this whole uh, session. So feel free to prepare your uh, questions. Okay, so going back. One of the best uh, practice when doing sketches in Fusion 360 is to have uh, the origin, which is our X, Y, Z, 0, 0, 0, to be placed at the center or middle of our sketch uh, geometry. In this exercise, what I am seeing in order for us to center our origin is I'm going to create a, a line Placing our first point at the center point and at the center point of the circle, left click and hit escape. And from here, I'm going to have the midpoint of this horizontal line coincident with our origin. And to do that, I'm going to head over to constraints, selecting midpoint. Hovering over this horizontal line, left click, and selecting our origin. Hitting escape, and notice, from blue, our sketch is now in the color of black. And as I left click and hold to force this entities uh, to move, they are all locked down or fully constrained. Let's finish this challenge up by creating three lines, selecting line, hovering over this horizontal line. So notice that this X blue mark is the intersection. Left click here and a double left click to end that creation of a chain of lines. Left click here and a double left click. Left click here and double left click. Hitting escape. I want this line coincident with our origin. So with this line selected, I'm going to head up, selecting midpoint, and select our origin. Hitting escape. Next, I want these two vertical lines symmetrical with respect to this uh, vertical line. And to do that, let's head up to Constraints, selecting Symmetry. For Symmetry, the last selection will be the Symmetry line. So I'm going to select this vertical line first, the second, and uh, lastly, this Symmetry line. Hitting Escape. And let's head up, selecting Dimension. Let's dimension the distance between these two vertical lines. Placing our dimension here, key in 20. Hitting escape. And uh, notice this vertical line and this horizontal line are both helpers. So I'm going to select them both. Left click, hold control, and left click. Head to our sketch palette. And under line type, I'm going to select construction. 
Our sketch now uh, fully defined. I'm going to select finish a sketch. And just for fun, I'm going to extrude this, heading to create, selecting, extrude. Prompted to select profiles. Selecting this profile, this profile, and this profile. Pull this arrow down. I'm going to key in negative 10 or negative 15. Operation new body, selecting OK. In addition, we can reuse sketches. So I'm going to twirl sketches a folder, turn on the visibility of sketch one, head up and select extrude, select this profile, pull this arrow down, and for the value, let's say negative five, for negative direction, operation cut and selecting OK. Let's turn off the visibility of our origin planes and axis. Same with our sketch. Okay, so uh, yeah, simple as that. We have uh, created uh, a simple uh, model in uh, Fusion 360. So once more, shout out to our uh, friends uh, in uh, PL Moon. And thank you for joining us. So let me show you a glimpse of our uh, second uh, challenge. So once more, the your task for those who are opting to have an official certificate of course completion is you have uh, to create all of this uh, 2D uh, drawings. Yep. Uh, so moving forward, let me demonstrate to you how we are going to create uh, this third, uh, third in the drawing, but second in our current live stream, which is the clutch uh, pad. So going back to full screen, requesting you to set the units to millimeter. I prefer sketching on our XY plane, heading up to create, selecting create sketch and uh, selecting our XY plane. Let's create a rectangle. And instead of selecting two point rectangle, we're going to create a drop down under rectangle. I'm going to select center rectangle. Let's place our center point at the origin. Left click here. Notice dimension field highlighted in blue. I'm going to key in 180 and I'm going to cycle through the other dimension by hitting tab and key in 100. Hitting enter. Next, we're going to create another rectangle, this time selecting two point rectangle. I'm going to place our first corner somewhere around here, left click and Notice horizontal dimension active. I'm going to key in 154 and simply hit enter. Let's create another rectangle. Heading up, selecting two point rectangle, creating a rectangle at this corner or intersection. Left click here and the left click. So notice I did not input any value for now. Left click and left click, left click and left click. Hitting escape. Let's add constraints. Specifically, I want this three horizontal lines equal in length. I'm going to head up, selecting equal, selecting this horizontal line and this horizontal line, this parent and this child. Hitting escape and let's inspect. I'm going to move this line. And notice all of this uh, three horizontal lines needs to be aligned horizontally. And the perfect constraint for that is collinear. So I'm going to head up to constraints, selecting collinear. Selecting this horizontal line and this horizontal line. 
this horizontal line and this horizontal line. Hitting escape. Moving forward, let's trim out this line segments. Heading up to modify and selecting trim. In addition, notice under selection, our mode is now paint. So with that in mind, I can left click and hold. So notice the blue box on our cursor. I'm still holding my left mouse button and I'm going to slide down. Repeating the procedure, left click and hold, sliding down, left click and hold, sliding down to trim out those line segments. Hitting escape and let's inspect. So notice all of these four lines are collinear. Moving forward, I want the midpoint of this horizontal line coincident with our origin. Heading up, selecting midpoint, selecting this horizontal line and our origin. Hitting escape. Okay. And uh, shout out once more to our uh, friends, uh, Bataan Peninsula State University, uh, Palawan State University, CPSU, JPS, uh, M, uh, E, okay, so going back. Next, I want the midpoint of this line vertically aligned with our origin. To do that, I can create a line and snap this line to its uh, midpoint. So notice the triangle and uh, left click on our origin, hitting escape, and then have this line be a vertically constrained. Another method is I'm going to hit undo and instead of creating a line we're going to select our vertical constraint. I'm going to hover over this line and hold the shift to snap to this line's midpoint. So notice the triangle it's the midpoint I'm going to left click and left click on our origin. Hitting escape. So notice the midpoint and the origin are now aligned vertically. Moving forward, these four lines need to be equal in length as well. So we're going to select equal. Selecting this horizontal line and this horizontal line, this horizontal line, and this horizontal line. And because we have a midpoint or vertical constraint here, this horizontal line is automatically equal with these three lines as well. Hitting escape. Let's now mirror these lines to the other side. Let's now head up to create toolbar under this uh, drop down. Select a mirror. Prompted to select objects, and those objects are these lines. Selecting these lines. And this line. The mirror line, left click here, will be this horizontal line. So notice we have a preview. I'm going to select OK. And once more, this horizontal line is a helper. So I'm going to select this. And on our sketch palette, I'm going to change its line type to construction. Let's grab our dimension tool, heading to create toolbar, selecting sketch dimension. I'm going to select this horizontal line and this horizontal line. Place our dimension here. Key in 74. Dimension tool still active, selecting these two horizontal lines. 
the distance between them to be 34 and selecting these two vertical lines the distance between them is 22 hitting enter and hitting escape it turned into black meaning it's a fully defined let's now select finish a sketch and extrude this direction to be symmetric I prefer the measurement to be whole length let me grab this arrow up and I prefer the value to be 5 operation new body selecting OK Okay, so uh, simple as that, uh, we have created our uh, second uh, challenge. And let me show you the third uh, one that we are uh, going to create. So uh, before we proceed uh, further, uh, let me reiterate another uh, important tip. So as much as, much as uh, possible, have uh, your origin be placed uh, at the center or middle of your sketch okay so it may depend okay but for this uh, challenge that i'm going to demonstrate to you uh right now obviously our origin should be placed here at the center okay so let me head back and yeah let's continue this one Let's inspect the 2D drawing. So what I'm seeing here is we have diameter dimensions, which is 190, 105, 170, 80, and 50. Let's start out by creating those circles. I'm going to hit C4 circle and let's sketch on our XZ plane. Zooming in. Let's place our center point at the origin. Smallest circle to be 50. Hitting enter. Notice our latest and previous command was a circle. So once more, with that in mind, we can right click for our marking menu head up to repeat center diameter circle. Creating another circle, having a diameter of 80. In addition, instead of simply right-clicking, I can right-click and hold and move up vertically to repeat center diameter circle. So once more, I'm going to quickly hold the right-click and move up vertically. So notice it's now a center diameter circle. Placing our center point at the origin. Diameter to be 105. Holding our right mouse button and moving up vertically to repeat center diameter circle. The diameter for this circle to be 170. Repeating the procedure, creating another circle, and finally at 190. Hitting enter. Let's reposition the placement or location of these circles. Let's create the keyway on our smallest circle, zooming in. And instead of creating three lines, I'm going to hit R to grab our two-point rectangle. I'm going to place its first corner on this intersection. Move up. Key in 10. Hitting tab and key in 8. Hitting enter. Next. I want this point and our circle coincident with each other. So with both of them selected, I'm going to right-click and select coincident. 
I prefer our sketch to be clean, so I'm going to trim out these entities. Shortcut key for that is letter T for trim. Left click and hold to delete those entities. So notice, whenever we do trim, we may be removing some constraints or dimensions. I'm going to hit escape and our next intent is to have the midpoint of this horizontal line aligned vertically with our origin. Let me select our horizontal vertical and to locate the midpoint of this line, I'm going to hold shift. So notice the triangle, that's the midpoint. Left click on that and selecting our origin. Zooming out and hitting escape. And uh, that's uh, quickly creating uh, the first uh, half of our uh, Geneva wheel. Okay, so shout out once more uh, to our friends in uh, Iris uh, College Engineering Student Government, to our uh, friends in uh, Fab Lab, Fab Lab Mindanao, Fab Labs uh, Philippines, Thank you so much, uh, Sir Archie, and uh, to JPSME uh, TUP uh, Tagig. Uh, if you're there, thank you for uh, joining us. Yep, uh, let's head back and continue. Our next intent is to have the midpoint of this horizontal line aligned vertically with our origin. Let me select our horizontal vertical and to locate the midpoint of this line, I'm going to hold shift. So notice the triangle, that's the midpoint. Left click on that and selecting our origin. Zooming out and hitting escape. Moving forward, let's create the feature here. I'm going to hit L for line. Let's place our first point at this circle. Placing this at the intersection, left click. And once more, we can create an arc within the line command. So with inferred a vertical constraint visible, I'm going to left click and hold to create an arc. Release, head up and double left click. Hitting escape, let me zoom in. Let's add a tangent constraint between this line and this arc. Right clicking, selecting tangent. Hitting escape, let's have the center point of this arc aligned vertically with our origin. Holding control and selecting our origin. Right clicking, selecting horizontal, vertical. Hit D for dimension. Let's dimension these two vertical lines to be 15. Hitting enter. Hitting escape. And uh, finally, have uh, this center point coincident with uh, this circle, which is 105. So with both of them selected, I'm going to right click Selecting Coincident. Hitting Escape and let's have uh, this circle be a construction line type. Let's create an arc here. I'm going to hit S for our shortcuts, typing ARC, selecting three-point arc, placing the first point at this intersection. Left click here and the left click, hitting escape. The radius for this to be 30. So with this arc selected, I'm going to hit D for dimension. Let me place our dimension here, key in 30. Hitting escape and let's have this center point coincident with this circle. With both of them selected, I'm going to right click, selecting coincident. Hitting escape. Moving forward, I'm going to create a line 
coming from our origin, hitting L4 line, making sure this line is uh, perfectly vertical. So with the inferred vertical constraint visible, I'm going to double left click on this intersection. Creating another line from our origin all the way up to the center point, double left click, hitting escape. Next, I'm going to select these two lines and the keyboard shortcut for converting this into a construction entity is simply hitting X on our keyboard. Hit D once more for dimension and I'm seeing the angle between these two lines should be 30. Hitting enter and hitting escape. Let's turn this circle into a construction entity as well, hitting X on our keyboard. Finally, let's create a circular pattern. Once more, hitting S for sketch shortcuts, typing P-A-T-T, and selecting circular pattern, this one up above. For the objects, selecting this arc, this line, this line, and this arc. Activating our center point. And that center point is our origin. The quantity, let's raise this up to 6. Notice the preview, selecting OK. And from here, I have the option to simply hit E for extrude to exit out of a sketch mode. So hitting E for the profiles, let me select this profile. Let's have the direction to symmetric, measurement to be whole length. Let me pull this arrow and a key in 5. Selecting OK. Notice the sketch was consumed. It was simply turned off. So let's turn on the visibility of sketch 1. Hit E once more for extrude. Let's reuse this sketch. Selecting this profile. Moving this arrow. Changing the direction to symmetric. Measurement to be whole length. <coughs> okay. <coughs> and I prefer the thickness to be 15. Operation to be joined. Selecting OK. Let's turn off sketch 1. And as uh, simple as that, we have uh, created the challenge for Geneva wheel. Okay, so yep. Uh, once more, uh, shout out to our friends in uh, Junior Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, uh, Batangas uh, Chapter, JPSME CMU, uh, JPSME DM Don Mariano Marcos State University, and uh, shout out also to our uh, friends in USJR. Okay. So next, uh, the next uh, challenge uh, for this live stream is the connecting clamp. So, yep, uh, simple as this. So once more, let me reiterate the importance of placing your origin. So what I'm seeing here and what I will do is uh, I'm going to place our origin here on uh, the midpoint of this horizontal uh, line. Okay, and, and uh, before we begin, let's change our units to inches. Heading over to document settings, selecting change active units, unit type to be in inch. Selecting OK. Let's quickly enter sketch mode by hitting L for line. And let's sketch on our XZ plane. Notice the horizontal line on the 2D drawing. Let's have that horizontal line here at the center. So I'm going to head over this area. 
left click, head up, notice the inferred of vertical constraint, and recall we can create an arc within the line command. So I'm going to left click and hold, creating an arc, release, and on the drawing, we have a, a fillet here, which is a point two. And instead of creating that uh, fillet, I'm just going to left click, left click here, left click and hold to create an arc, move down, left click, left click, just quickly creating the serrations and not mindful of the created constraints. And close this one as a profile. Hitting escape. Notice the obvious items that needs uh, constraints. For example, this arc and this line needs to have a, a tangent constraint. With both of them selected, I'm going to right click selecting tangent. Tangent constraint still active, selecting this arc and this line. Hitting escape. Next, I would like this line and our origin coincident with the midpoint of this horizontal line. I'm going to right click, selecting midpoint. Next, let's have uh, these two arcs equal in radius. Right clicking, selecting equal, hitting escape. I would like this center point and this center point horizontally aligned. I'm going to right click, selecting horizontal or vertical. Next, I would like this, this parallel constraint. Okay, so once more, when we hover over a specific constraint, it highlights, giving us a, a visual cue on the entities they are associated with. Okay, and uh, one of the things that uh, typically trips uh, up absolute beginners is uh, be mindful of uh, the, the appearance of a uh, finished uh, sketch. Uh, mostly to those who are absolute beginners, when, when they're creating out sketches, we are seeing populated uh, sketches here. Okay? So, yep. Uh, with that, uh, shout out <laughs> once more to our friends in uh, Xavier uh, University. To our friends in Mapua, Manufacturing, Mechanical Engineering Student Council, Batanga State University, Mechatronics Engineering Student Society, Holy Angel University. Uh, shout out to our friends in uh, Bicol University Student uh, Unit. Okay, so heading back once more. Let's finish up connecting clamp. Let's continue. I'm going to hit D for a dimension. And first, I'm going to dimension the outer bounds or the length of the sketch geometry. So selecting these two vertical lines, placing our dimension here, keying in 5.3. Dimension tool still active. Let's select this vertical line and this vertical line. Place our dimension here, key in 1.3. 33, hitting enter. Next, let's select this center point and our origin. The distance between them is 0.7. Zooming in, selecting our origin and this point. Placing our dimension here, key in 0.6. Let's define the radius of this arc. And on the drawing, it's a, a diameter. Let's define the radius of this arc. And notice on the drawing, it's a diameter dimension. I'm going to select this arc. Notice it's radial for now. And with that, I'm going to right click and enable diameter. Placing our dimension here, keying in 1.8.
Let's select our origin, selecting this endpoint. Place our dimension here, key in 1.5. Hit C for circle. Let's create the two circles here. Creating another circle here. The diameter is 0 0.9. Let me place this dimension over here. Select these two circles. Right click, have them both equal in diameter. And because equal constraint is still active, I can now select this line and this line, this line and this line. Hitting escape and notice they all turned into black, which is a fully defined. And for the fillets here, I can head over to modify, select fillet. Selecting this point, the radius to be 0.2. So notice some of the constraints or dimensions was removed with the fillet command. Let's repeat fillet. I'm going to right click, selecting repeat fillet, selecting this point, keying in 0.2. Recall, in the previous videos, I typically move entities. By moving entities, it gives you the idea on what is required. May it be a dimension or constraint. So let's check. Hovering over this horizontal line and moving this. How about this center point? So notice... I am seeing that we need to add a midpoint constraint between this horizontal line and our origin. So with that, I'm going to select this horizontal line and our origin, right-clicking and selecting midpoint. Hitting escape. Let's now hit E for extrude, selecting this profile, changing the direction to symmetric. Measurement to be whole length. Let me grab this arrow. I'm okay with a value of 1.5. Operation new body and selecting OK. Okay, so this is, uh, yep. Uh, so I hope you're having a grasp of how uh, important uh, sketch constraints is so if ever you're uh, migrating or you'll be using other uh, parametric CAD modeling packages such as Inventor, uh, SolidWorks, NX Catia, all of those uh, CAD modeling packages uses constraints. So definitely after uh, completing uh, the, the, the assigned uh, task uh, to be submitted, you'll be having a solid understanding of uh, sketch constraints, okay? So shout out also to our friends in Polytechnic University of the Philippines, JPSME, uh, Sorsogon State University, uh, PSME Bicol, a Regional Council of Students, uh, to our friends in uh, PSME Paranaque Chapter, PSME Metro South, uh, PSME Nueva Ecija NEUST, okay, TUP Manila JPSME. Uh, so, yes, Miss Nelsie, okay. So, I hope uh, <laughs> you're enjoying this uh, live stream. Uh, our next uh, challenge uh, for the stream will be. Uh, the pipe ring. Yep, so once more, we are going to place uh, the origin at the center, which will obviously give us the opportunity to create uh, circular uh, patterns. Okay, so and before we dive in uh, with the pipe ring, let me have, uh, let me give you a, a quick video on one of the topics that we are uh, uh, going to discover in this series of uh, Fusion 360 live stream training, okay? So showing you 
one of the things that you'll be learning by participating in this uh, monthly live stream training. So showing you this one from General Motors. At General Motors, we're all about putting our customers first and at the center of everything we do. If we can take a mile per gallon of fuel economy off, if we can extend our range 10 miles in an electric vehicle, that can be a huge competitive advantage for General Motors. As you start looking into the future, generative design paired with additive manufacturing can be completely disruptive to our industry. To deliver those functionally optimized designs and deliver performance to our customers that they couldn't get any other way. We've been doing additive manufacturing at GM for over 30 years. Rapid prototyping, assembly tooling, jigs, fixtures. How do we take that next step? Getting people to think differently. Not migrate back to, well, we can't do it. Additive manufacturing can enable us to do this. We have some very unique design challenges in some of our upcoming vehicle programs. One of those was a seat bracket. That seat bracket is very important from a functional safety perspective. How can we fully functionally optimize that design for mass? We chose to use generative design as our design tool to come up with different options for the seat bracket. Normally when we face a design challenge like that, we may come up with two or three different design options. But with generative design, we could come up with over 150 some solutions that we just couldn't have thought of with any other existing design tools. We formed a partnership with Autodesk. We thought it was a unique opportunity to really use those tools to deliver a design that we couldn't come up with any other way. We've run it through our, our normal set of test procedures that are required for this part. This part is so much better than the previous part. 40% mass savings, at the same time getting 20% stronger, far exceeded my expectations of what we could achieve. We have many different parts and pieces on our vehicles, over 30,000 on average. But now the real challenge is to find all those different applications where we can apply these same principles of generative design to really optimize our vehicles further. Okay, so that's showing you a glimpse of uh, the generative design. Yes, definitely we'll be having a live stream uh, training for that. Okay, so moving forward, thank you also to our friends in Tarlac State University College of Engineering and Technology Student Council. I think this is also beneficial to our uh, friends in uh, UAPSA, no? For I think architects also. Some of our architects would like to create, uh, would like to do 3D printing as well. Okay, so probably next time we will be uh, uh, live streaming uh, this session as well to our uh, friends in UAPSA. Shout out also to our friends in Rizal Technological University, UMETS. Yep, uh, if you're there, comment down below for attendance. To our friends from RTU, uh, U Mets. Okay, so heading back to Fusion 360, let me begin uh, creating the connecting clamp. And uh, before we begin, let's change our units to inches. Heading over to document settings, selecting change active units, unit type to be in inch. Selecting OK. Let's quickly enter sketch mode by hitting L for line and let's sketch on our XZ plane. Notice the horizontal. Let's begin by creating our reference circle, hitting C, and let's sketch on our XZ plane, placing our center point at the origin. Let's key in 160, hitting enter. Let's create another circle. I'm going to right click to enable our marking menu, selecting repeat center diameter circle. Let's place its center point at this intersection. Radius to be 20. Let's create another copies of the circle. I'm going to left click and hold my right mouse button. And moving up vertically to repeat center diameter circle, creating two circles, one circle here, other circle at this intersection, left click and hitting escape. Let's have these two circles, 
equal in diameter with this circle. So I'm going to select these two circles, right-clicking, selecting equal, equal constraint, still active, selecting this circle and this circle. Hitting escape. Next, I would like this center point to be aligned vertically with our origin. So selecting them both, right-clicking, selecting horizontal vertical, hitting escape. Next, I'm going to create two lines coming from our origin, going to this center point, double left click, left click here and double left click on this center point. Create another line which will serve as a symmetry line. Heading over to the center point, double left click, hitting escape. In addition, this circle and this three lines are all helpers. So let's turn them into a construction entity by hitting X on our keyboard. Let's add a, a symmetry constraint between these two center points with respect to this uh, vertical line. To do that, first I'm going to select these two target symmetry objects and lastly our symmetry line. Holding control and left clicking and right click. Notice we now have a symmetry. Hitting escape and hitting D4 dimension. Let's dimension the distance between this line and uh, this line to be 30 degrees. Moving forward, let's create uh, three circles. Hitting C4 circle. Let's create the first circle here having a diameter of 40. Holding my right mouse button and sliding up vertically to repeat center diameter circle. Create a circle here, a circle here. Hitting escape, selecting this circle and this circle. Right clicking, let's have them both equal. Equal constraint active, selecting this circle and this circle. Hitting escape. Let's now create an arc. Hit S for shortcuts, typing A, R, C, selecting three-point arc. Create an arc on this intersections. Creating another arc here. Hitting escape. And uh, let's add a, a tangent constraint. Selecting this circle and this arc, right-clicking. Selecting tangent, let's have this arc and this circle have a tangent constraint as well. Hitting escape and hitting D4 dimension, let's have uh, this arc to have a radius of 20. This arc to be 30. Hitting escape, and I would like to mirror these two arcs to the other side. So with both of them selected, I'm going to hit S for shortcuts, typing MI, selecting mirror. The mirror line will be this vertical line, and selecting OK. OK, so from this alone, we may be able to extrude this right away, okay? And then uh, have it as a circular pattern and then combine. Uh, but for now, I prefer cleaning this up. Next, I'm going to create another line coming from our origin all the way up to this center point, hitting escape. Create another line once more from this center point going to this center point. At this moment, we can actually extrude these profiles out 
and create a circular pattern. Instead, I'm going to trim out this entities. So warning, when trimming, we may lose some dimensions and constraints. I'm going to hit T4 trim, trimming out this entities. Trimming out. And hitting escape. Let's check our sketch. I'm going to move this line. And what I'm seeing here, we need to add an angle. Hitting D4 dimension. Let me dimension this two lines having an angle of 30. Hitting escape. Next, let's inspect this undefined arc. And what I'm seeing here is we need to have their center points coincident with this line. Selecting them both, right-clicking, and selecting coincident. Hitting escape. Let's clean things up once more, hitting T for trim. And I would like to trim out the segments of this circle. Selecting the segments. Selecting this one. Hitting escape. And we're going to turn these two lines as a construction line. Hitting X. Hitting escape. And from here, let me delete this lines same with this arc and uh, clean up our dimensions and finally hitting S for sketch shortcuts typing C I R and selecting circular pattern the objects, it will be this arcs, this arc, and this circle. Let's activate our center point. Left click here, selecting our origin or this center point. And for the quantity, we can left click on this app arrow to be. 12. Notice the preview. Let's now select OK. Sketch fully defined. We can now hit E for extrude and select this profile. Let's change the direction to symmetric, distance full length, pulling this arrow. Let's give this a thickness of 5. And Operation U Buddy selecting OK. And that's uh, the pipe ring created in a Fusion 360. Okay? So, yep. Uh, if you have uh, questions or if you do have a follow up for uh, certificates or something else, we are uh, now open for that. After uh, we say thank you to our uh, partners who made this uh, possible. So after this uh, message of thanks, I'll be adding Miss Nelsie.
Okay, so adding uh, Miss Nelsie. So if you have uh, comments <laughs> or or questions with regards to the output, okay, so you have to uh, register now. After this, we will be forwarding the the required uh, outputs. Okay, so you have to. Uh, fill out the form. Can you share screen, Miss Nelsie, to us the sample of that form? Okay. So once more, your uh, your task uh, to earn a certificate of course completion is you will create all of these eleven uh, challenges in Fusion Three Hundred and Sixty, and then you have. Uh, to share, you have to create your folder. May it be in Google Drive. You have to share uh, the link uh, to us for us to check uh, your works. That is, if you are opting to have a certificate of a course completion. For those who are opting for a certificate of event participation only, yeah, please uh, comment down your full name as seen in your. Uh, student or government ID and your school or uh, company name. So, potato, potato, uh, we will email you the details on how to submit uh, the required output. So, for us to uh, send you those infos, you have to register in the link uh, below. Can you share to us, uh, Ms. Delcy, that form? Form for a uh, reg registration form? Yes, yes, uh, for um, a Fusion 360 monthly challenge. So if you have questions, I think now is the time and... Can you uh, see my screen now? Yes, we're seeing your uh, screen now. Yeah, so this is our, our registration form for for Fusion 360 uh, monthly challenge. So please do register now as uh, we'll be closing this anytime soon or after the the live. no? And uh, we'll just open it uh, next month. So make sure... You input your full name as in on your government ID, your active and valid email address, your mobile number, your uh, job title or designation. Let's say student, you just uh, need to input student. Kung educator, just put it educator. And your school or company name. And uh, this one is, uh, please make sure that you will input the proper a course name. So let's say uh, name of the title series. Our training uh, for tonight is Master 2D Sketching in Fusion 360. So make sure you will input um, the complete uh, course name. Okay, and uh, if you have a LinkedIn, please do um, post or link there and uh, inviting you to join our groups as well for us to serve you better and um attach here is also the uh, fusion 360 download link so if you don't have fusion please uh, feel free to grab this link and download and install in your devices and uh, for more questions uh, on the next section there's your my uh information your voice uh, is low now. Can you, uh, I think under the settings of uh, this live stream service, you may go to audio and enable echo cancellation and automatically adjust mic volume. Enable all of those uh, items. So, yep. yeah. But I'm hearing you clearly and uh, some of our uh, participants Hello? are... Uh, lower, lower na lang muna. Lower the gain. I'm hearing the, ano, the background. Da. Okay, I think that's optimal.
Yep. So we will forward the requirements for the uh, output. And I think we have one question. Uh, using circular pattern, what would happen if the lines or curves are crossing each other? So if I have uh, created a circular pattern using this uh, method, let me hit S. Notice I'm in the ano po, I'm in the I'm in sketch mode. Yeah, sketch mode. Okay, so if we are overlapping, uh, it is still okay. Uh, the bad thing is. So notice here, I'm creating a circular pattern now. I'm increasing the number of instances. So notice there's an overlap happening now. Okay, so that's okay. But uh, the reason that I chopped down both sides is to have uh, the sketch clean. Okay, clean looking, not a uh, mess. And uh, true to what uh, the challenge is. Okay, so that's uh, also a tip for uh, those who will uh, be taking up uh, the challenge of the 2D challenges. So as much as, as, much as possible, you have uh, from your sketch alone, it is almost as much as possible the same with the 2D drawing. Yes. So thank you, Sir Ekrem. Talk. Okay, yes, Miss Delcy. Uh, yeah, uh, let me share my screen once more. You know, we would like to congratulate the state colleges who have who have become universities now. So for example, the Sorsogon State uh, College has uh, is now Sorsogon State University. Wow! Congratulations. Yep. Uh, thank you also to University of Mindanao Tagum College Engineering Student uh, Council, to TUP Tagig University Student Government. Uh, yep. Uh, thank you for making this live stream possible. Uh, to our friends in Benild, Industrial uh, Designers, College of St. Benild, uh, thank you for uh, making this uh, possible as well. Yeah, no. So for the certificate, so tonight we'll be uh, releasing the certificate of event participation. To those who are new to our group, you need to create an account at eduevaluation.autodesk.com. So the link is uh, posted in our comment section. You need to create an account and please make sure that your name uh, is correct as seen on your um, valid IDs. Okay, then after that, uh, the course ID that we sent you, you will use that in the evaluation. So my... Uh, this test is a uh, test. The training evaluation system is might be uh, different from your end since the new look of test is. Let me share my screen. It's the new look of a test. So you need to log in as a student or training participant. So please make sure that your name is uh, correct. Because we won't able to to correct your name, no? You need to to make sure that your name is um properly inputted, no? Tapos um you can message us in meetup.com to claim your course ID. So the certificate of course completion uh, is only valid for uh, seven days from now. So you need to claim it 
until uh, 12, 11.59 p.m. Okay, so you can start messaging or dropping, uh, drop us a message in meetup.com and we'll be uh, responding to your um, questions or messages. Okay, so yep, uh, our upcoming uh, training. So highly suggesting you subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, for you to be notified, not because of YouTube, but because of our uh, uh, training. So the nearest one will uh, be this uh, April 20 for Dynamo. Okay, so for those who are not familiar with Dynamo, uh, it's another uh, plug-in software for the AEC. Uh, yeah, in, in addition, Dynamo is all can also be used inside the uh, can also be used in tandem with the Fusion 360. So, but Dynamo basically uh, originated for uh, the use with uh, Revit. So it. As you can see here, it can also be used in civil uh, 3D. So to our uh, friends, okay, who are who would like to be or students who would like to be in the industry of AEC, architecture, engineering, and construction, I uh, highly suggesting you attend this event. The speaker for this, the sharer, is based in USA, uh, Texas. Okay, so yep, he, I think he's an American. And right now we are learning, or I hope you have learned even just a little about uh, 2D sketching in Fusion 360. But also this coming April 30, we will be having uh, this time 2D sketching, but in the version or in tune of Autodesk inventor so stay tuned uh, for that as well and that will happen on uh, friday as well but the last uh, friday of the month so as you can see there uh part modeling in fusion 360 will be uh, next month and uh, for our friends again in aec we have autodesk revit structure basics part one day one and day two so yep all coming from the heart uh our ways and means of uh helping out and serving everyone uh yep in this uh days times of uh the pandemic yep uh any more announcement miss nelsie yeah i'll just uh, wait for your messages in Meetup, and uh, please bear with us if um, we will receive a late uh, reply. No, as we'll be expecting bulk messages, and then yeah, we'll see you in the our next uh, live stream. It's on April twenty. Yep. For Dynamo for, yeah, for Dynamo Civil 3D for and Sheet Set Manager. Yeah, so uh, I'll just wait for your messages. So some of you uh, already sent me a message and I'll be responding it after the live. Okay, so with that, I uh, will be leaving you with this... Uh, uh, messages and the uh, video so if ever you have uh, comments questions or you have a need uh, for uh, training or speakers yep uh, our uh, community is open for that and yeah if all, also if you have a um, message or an advocacy to share okay so you kung may concern especially sa mga students no if you're a veteran power user of any autodesk software do not keep it <laughs> to yourself okay so uh please share it uh, most especially to our uh, dearest uh, students so i hope that's uh if you cannot share any monetary ano, no <laughs> donation if you're a veteran of any autodesk software 
uh, inviting everyone to volunteer teach. Same as what we are doing and everyone else is doing uh, in this uh, community. So yes, uh, this community is all about helping one another and uh, sharing knowledge. So as you can see, we don't ask for any uh, for any fees. So yep, our ways and means of uh, serving everyone and hopefully being a blessing <laughs> to everyone. So to those who are capable or veteran users of uh, any Autodesk software, uh, yes, inviting you to be our next uh, instructor, sharer for Autodesk uh, Community Philippines. Let's make a positive difference. Uh, our medium being education. Okay? Yep, Miss Nelsie. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Sir Joe Mark. Okay, so once more, goodbye and uh, thank you everyone. I'll be leaving you with this uh, few videos. Yep, uh, connect with me in LinkedIn. Message us anytime, anywhere. Okay, and yeah, we'll try to be as much, uh, be responsive as much as uh, we uh, can. Okay, so once more, thank you everyone. Robots are incredibly challenging to program, to build, and to apply to most problem space. Modbot came about from telling the story of how hard it was to build a smart machine. What we see is a vision of the future where human beings no longer need to do dull, dirty, dangerous tasks. The point of it is to make robots dramatically more accessible. It's kind of like an intent multiplier. All these people with these cool ideas can now actually execute on them, and then that'll propagate out, and then other people will have more ideas, and then they'll be able to execute on them as well. Modularity offers to people the ability to adapt a solution to their specific problem. It allows them to change that solution on the fly as the changing needs of their problem arise. So a great advantage that Modbot has over others is that we have started with modularity in mind. We have solved the challenging problems of really quick and highly reliable plug and play mechanical and electrical interfaces, which allows us to be able to build up solutions on top of that modularity very easily. We've worked with some of the biggest, most advanced brands in industry. We've worked with Siemens and Boeing, and we've helped them solve some unique problems. I think, however, the most exciting big opportunity is the idea that small businesses that have never had a robot before can now build something that matches their requirements and saves them or makes them money and has the potential to impact tens of thousands of businesses. When we started out, we needed tools that were fast, easy to pick up and learn. In Fusion 360, we can quickly flip between modeling, rendering, and FEA. They've basically taken the learnings from you know the 30-year history of 3D design and rebuilt it. It felt like there was a kindred spirit. Both of us, Modbot and Fusion 360, were startups in our own space. Uh, we had a vision of disrupting the status quo. It's very satisfying to see this startup that I saw four years back grow into a mature company that is ready to launch into the robotic space. I was able to give them a lot of feedback and, and actually listen. We found that over the years, the tool actually grew and developed with us. As our requirements went up, the tool got better and better and features that we requested appeared. Our entire company is dependent upon Fusion 360. And this whole ecosystem can now talk to each other because of this cloud connectivity. You can comment through it, you can share these files. You don't have to hand wave too much saying that it looks like this, you know, it's got to go in that way. You can actually kind of pull up the 3D model or they can pull it up. So it certainly decreases the barriers of communication. The opportunity is to put a platform in front of people that allows more and more people to be applying robotics to their problems. And the more people that get access to that technology, the more they can apply that, the more interesting robots we start seeing in our real world.